Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and right now it looks as though AI and of course ChatGPT are the shiny new objects of the technology space these days. There's always something that we're hearing everybody buzzing about, whether it's crypto or NFTs or of course now AI. And for me, I like to see if there's actually something useful I can gain from this technology before I get excited about it. And I have to say, I've been using ChatGPT for a very specific purpose for some things that I do here around the channel. And it has helped me immensely, especially when it comes to making my workflow more efficient. And I wanted to share what I've been doing with it with you. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I'm not being sponsored by ChatGPT here. In fact, I am paying for their ChatGPT Plus service so that I can get some of the features that I'm going to show you. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how I am using ChatGPT. Now, as a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, what I get access to, of course, is the GPT-4 engine. And just this past week, they expanded the functionality of ChatGPT to allow for plugins. And if you are currently a paying subscriber and don't see the plugin options up here, if you go down to your username and go over to settings, what you will see in beta features now are these switches to enable uh, web browsing and plugins. Apparently there's also a code interpreter that will be added to the mix, hopefully in the next couple of days that will add some data analysis tools. And when you enable these features, then you'll be able to do things that go beyond whatever it has in its data store. So up until these plugins were available, if you ask ChatGPT a question, its knowledge was cut off in September of 2021. Now it can actually go out onto the internet and pull things down, and in some cases maybe send things back, but we're not gonna do that today. Uh, what you have to do though to enable those plugins is to go over here to the top of the screen and then select plugins here as the model that you're going to be using. And what'll happen from here is you'll have another menu come down. The UI could probably use some work where you can select which plugins you would like to enable for your particular task that you want to give it. In fact, these plugins can work together. So you can have one thing pull some data from one area, another plugin pull it from someplace else, and you can have ChatGPT combine it all in its logic here. There's also a plugin store, and this is where you go to find the plugins, and there's new ones getting added all the time. They don't have a good way of searching or sorting, so what I've been doing is just kind of going through the list here and installing things that interest me. Um, but the ones that I'm using, I found to be extremely useful, and I'm sure we'll be coming back to some of these plugins as more and more get added to the mix. So what is it that's got me all excited here about this AI technology? Well, about a year and a half ago, I set up my own blog at blog.lon.tv. And the reason I set up the blog was that I've been posting stuff on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube, but I didn't really own any of it. And if one of those platforms ever went away or decided they didn't like me anymore, my content would disappear from the internet. And I wanted to go back to where I kind of got started with content, which is having my own website. So I set one up and what I've been doing every time I post the video is I put the video as an embed on the blog here. I do keep an offline backup should I ever get kicked off of YouTube. And then I also started writing up a summary of the video to help inform search engines so that people might be able to find my content in different ways. And although it's really fun to do this, it takes a lot of time. And there were some weeks where I would spend most of Sunday just writing up summaries of all the videos that I did uh, over the prior week. And I don't script anything on this channel, so I don't really have a lot to go on. So I'd have to basically write up an article in addition to producing the video, and it was starting to take a lot of time. But there's a lot of benefit to doing this because there's more than just the website. I also have an email newsletter that gets generated automatically from the blog. And so whenever I post a new video, the next morning I send out a little digest email uh, to let everybody know that I've got a new video up for you to watch. And again, sometimes they get caught behind on this, uh, but this has been very helpful for the several hundred people that are on that list because they like to be notified whenever I upload something and YouTube doesn't do a very good job of that. Uh, so here you get the article, you get my link blog, and then you get my latest videos as well. And what's been great about ChatGPT is that it's helped me write up these summaries so over the last two or three weeks or so, 
about 85% of the article you're reading was generated by the AI. I, of course, go in and fix some things and tweak it a little bit so it's more of my voice, but for the most part, it has saved me probably at least 30 minutes to an hour for each video uh, from the time that I used to take having to compose the article to go with the video. So what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is going over to the automatically generated subtitles on my YouTube video. And one little trick here, if you click on this button, is you can have it download the subtitle as a text file. And what you get is a bunch of text that is the transcript of what you did in your video. And I was basically copying and pasting this uh, into ChatGPT. The problem I was running into, though, is that some of the transcripts were too long. So I had to take that as a starting point, take the output, and then finish up the rest. But now that these plugins are in place, I can actually point it at the URL of the video, and it can pull down the transcript for me. So let me show you how that works. So the first thing you need, of course, is the URL for the YouTube video. So here is my latest video of the Lenovo Flex 3i. So I'm just going to copy that into the clipboard. And if I go back to ChatGPT here, I want to make sure that plugins are the model that I'm using. And what I'm going to do is enable what's called the Vox Script plugin. And this is what is going to pull down my video transcript. So what I'm going to do here in my request is to say, um, I want you to write a summary of my latest YouTube video for my blog. Write it in the first person as a journalist and pull down the full, let me finish this up here, the full transcript from here. Now, what I needed to do here is say the full transcript because what I've been finding with this is that the plugin only pulls down portions of the transcript. And if it's a little too long, it sometimes doesn't get all of it. So what you see it doing here now is communicating through VoxScript. And if you pull down this little thing here, you can see what it grabbed. And if it's longer, it'll go back and make a second request to VoxScript like it's doing now and get the rest of that transcript. And once it's ingested the transcript, that's when it puts together the uh, overall summary here. So now that it's got that, it looks like it needs to get a little bit more. Uh, it will then start writing. So this does take a little bit of time here, but once it does all of that uh, pulling down of information, it will begin writing. And it's not always perfect, so you can see here it took my request a little too literally. <laughs> it's, it's identifying myself as a journalist. I wanted, wanted it to write like a journalist, but I found that it does a pretty good job of that here. Um, so, you know, when I paste this into the blog, I will adjust the text a little bit here. But as you can see, it does a really good job of going through that transcript and pulling out kind of the more important parts of the video. And again, I haven't given it anything beyond the transcript, so it's not seeing my chapter markers, for example. It's just pulling down the text that YouTube generated from my speech. So let me have this thing finish writing, and when it's done, we'll see how well it did. All right, so here is what it came up with, and I will scroll through this slowly, so if you want to pause and read it, you can. Um, but as you can see here, it really followed the order of the video that I just uploaded on that Lenovo Chromebook. And it even picks out some details here, like my mention of its RAM being limited for Linux purposes, for example, or the fact that it got the screen brightness and the resolution properly reported here, along with the system specifications being right. Now, again, all of this stuff was in the transcript from YouTube, uh, but as many of you know, the transcripts aren't always that accurate insofar as how it interprets voice, and this thing is doing all of the corrections behind the scenes to get it right. So in this instance, I would say this blog post is probably 90% of the way there. Again, I'll probably tweak a few words or order of things a little bit. Uh, one thing that I noticed here is that uh, its mention of the lack of a pen is kind of a little out of order. And it may be where I said it, but I would probably put this somewhere else in the article. But for the most part, um, this is going to save me a ton of time in getting that blog post up quicker. And that was what I was aiming for here. So as you know, I'm not a full-time blogger, I'm a full-time video creator. So anything that I can do on my supplemental tasks like this one that can get me back in this chair shooting a video is a win. And although there's a lot of hype around AI, 
uh, this is something that has added efficiency to my workflow in a way that I think really validates this technology for my use case. And I would love to hear from some of you about some of the things you're doing with AI that go beyond just the gee whiz stuff. Because if you've got something here now that has saved you an hour a day or maybe a half hour a day, that's significant. And if you can, again, make your work more efficient, uh, there are things out there that I think are worth paying for like this. And there are uh, some really good indicators here that this technology is going to be something we'll end up using day to day as opposed to something that we might find interesting but not really find a use for. So let me know how you're using it down in the comments below and we'll pick it up again with our next product review coming soon here on the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.